us now to talk about your health is Kay Connors, social worker with the University of Maryland Children's Hospital. Kay, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Just about a week ago, we had this horrible shooting in, in South Baltimore, 30 people, something like half of them were, were minors, were, were young mm -hmm. people. Talk about the psychological impact on, on them and, and on their, their peers in, in that community. Yes, unfortunately, Baltimore and most recently also Salisbury um, community have been impacted by these mass violent events. And so as the survivors of those events are recovering from their physical wounds, the, the stress and the psychological wounds are really what linger for quite a long time. When does the focus turn to that? I mean, um, the hospital's in closest proximity to this uh, apparent shootout, 30 people, um, were, were immediately overwhelmed. And, and the, uh, the first responders within the hospital, the doctors, the nurses, the other staff members spring into action. Your colleagues did a terrific job. When, when does the focus turn from stop the bleeding, mm -hmm. priority one, to the psychological side? It really starts uh, right away, and and I really appreciate you bringing up the first responders and the medical teams, because they've also been through so much um, with COVID and uh, having to then respond to these kind of events that often feel senseless, and it's hard to make meaning of these difficult things. So I think psychological first aid really focuses on getting in touch with your own feelings, um, normalizing that stress and anger and fear are really the first wave uh, of the response and allowing yourself to talk about that, to think about it, to do some things that are going to help you pause and reset and even nurture yourself. And sometimes when people have lived through really difficult things, they don't feel like they deserve a break or um, time to take care of themselves. But that's really an important part of psychological first aid that for everyone needs to start that night or the next day. You know, it used to be referred to as being uh, shell-shocked a generation yes. or two ago, yeah. now PTSD. How, how do you define that? What is it? Post-traumatic stress disorder is a, a clinical diagnosis. Um, about 20% of adults and about 20 or more, 20 to 30 percent of teenagers and children will actually um, experience full-blown PTSD. Most of us will experience some kind of range of traumatic reactions and responses uh, to difficult things. But PTSD, we look for that at about a month after the event. If you're still feeling very frightened having difficulty sleeping, having nightmares, having flashbacks, or a very sudden um, reminders or reactions um, to memories of what happened, uh, or also having very big emotional responses that get in the way of you doing your everyday life, going to school, being in relationships, things like that. That's when it's time to really reach out to your primary care doctor or even um, seek mental health treatment. So what is this concept of psychological first aid and, and when do you apply that? Uh, it really starts right away. We learned many years ago that something called psychological debriefing, at getting people to talk about events uh, right after they happened, was really more harmful than helpful. Interesting. And so in these, um, in these uh, 20 years, particularly after 9-11, we really learned that giving people comfort and aid, helping with problems in daily living, but also, um, you know, providing comfort, but also psychological comfort. Uh, if people want to talk about it, being able to listen, but not asking a lot of details, helping particularly teenagers in this uh, incident that we're talking about today and their parents, uh, giving them information about what this shell shock or traumatic stress response is going to be, that it's going to be normal, and you want to keep tabs on it uh, until things settle back down and you return to, 
to your normal routines. Yeah, I, I was wondering if the timing was, was bad from the standpoint of a young person because school's out, you know, summer vacation, but, but maybe if, if school's coming back in in a month and a half or, or whatever, that timing might be okay for, for school counselors to get involved? Um, yeah, I think school counselors will be a really important resource because the effects of this incident um, will still be felt, you know, in October, in August, and September when when kids return to school. I think school counselors are really experts in building on kids' strengths and their resilience. And for many kids, school is a safe space, even though we hear a lot about some bad things that happen in school for many kids it is a place of refuge and a place where they feel competent we yeah, wish that was was always the case that, yes. that it was a, a safe space what what should parents know what, what should parents um, in that community and maybe beyond that community because if you watch the news mm -hmm. you couldn't help but be exposed to this story or you mentioned Salisbury or DC or Philadelphia or Lord knows how many yeah, parents really play the key role. And I think psychological first aid really focuses on helping parents be that safe space for their for their children and their teenagers by giving them information and resources. Uh, first, starting with themselves and focusing on parents' self-care and not being too hard on themselves, giving them a chance to know that it's okay to have these strong feelings and particularly that worries about their children, and that's parents' main job is to protect their kids. Absolutely, nonstop and, and forever. Mm -hmm. um, is there a predictable timetable for for when um, somebody in the community, somebody in your colleagues in the hospital, might find themselves being affected by this? Is it hours, days, months? When when might somebody feel that? Percolating. Definitely after a month, if some of the intensity has not lessened and if people are having difficulty returning to their normal routines, uh, that's, that's a sign of uh, you might want to reach out for more help. Another thing is people that have already experienced stressful or traumatic events. And for many of our youth and families and communities, not that's... Not the first time. Yeah, this is right. not the first time. And, you know, we're, we're really just coming off the stress of COVID. So I think it's really going to take some time. And I think normalizing that it takes some time um, to uh, cope with, with this mass violence. Do, do you see that in your, your patients, that, that um, this is a community, it's a country, this is a planet that, you know, it's, it's still a little bit on edge from, from the pandemic, and then we just pile stuff on it. Yeah, I really do. And, and you know, this incident and the incident in Salisbury really s speaks to the concerns about gun violence as well. That's, in 2022, it was the number one reason why youth died. So not cancer and other things like automobile accidents, but it was gun violence. Yeah. So and parents are very worried. Social media is, uh, doesn't seem mm -hmm. to be a help to anybody. I yes. mean, is it um, probably not a place that young people should turn for assistance in dealing with yeah, a situation Yeah, thank you for like bringing this? up that point. It's really an important time to take a step back from social media, um, put yourself on a little social media diet where you're only watching a little bit, because the more you see repeated images and hear stories, um, the, the more difficult your stress response is gonna be. I just have half a minute, but I'm curious how you start a conversation with somebody. Say, say it's a, a young person, mm -hmm. where do you start? First, start by listening, how has it been for you? this time where some scary things have happened, and then listen to what they have to say. Some kids might not feel comfortable saying anything, so you might wanna just say, you know, it's really normal to feel afraid. Um, it's important to listen to those feelings because that's our, our stress alarm speaking, and so we, you have a healthy stress alarm uh, when you have fear. So normalizing fear rather than avoiding it, but then also talking about some coping strategies. So what are some things that could help you get back into your normal routine? Get a good night's sleep tonight. 
turn off that social media for a minute. Uh, reach out to a friend, play some basketball, do something fun. Great advice. We have to leave it there. Kay Connors with the University of Maryland Children's Hospital. Kay, we appreciate your time. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.